Hi, this is Heather from Autism Chrysalis. I ran across a conversation on social media recently in the context of business marketing. I promise I have a point that's relevant to you. And one of the participants, I'm not going to name who because I'm going to criticize their point, um, argued that it's totally fine to promise clients that you can get results for them in a particular time frame, even when it's up to the clients to do part of the work and they may not do it according to your schedule. He said, we may know that clients rarely do everything as prescribed, but you can't develop a system with that assumption. The estimated time is a product of a formula. You have to assume that their effort or inputs will be A, as prescribed, and B, cons constant, because a formula needs a constant or it's not a formula. If they are behind schedule, have an honest conversation about why and what needs to be done to fix it. So why am I bringing this up? It's a perfect example of the type of thinking that leads a lot of autistics to develop anxiety. Here's what I mean. Let's replace client with autistic and loosen the focus from getting results in a specific time frame to just getting results. It now reads, we may know that autistics rarely do everything as prescribed, but you can't develop a system with that assumption. The estimated results are a product of a formula you have to assume that their efforts or input will be A, as prescribed, and B, constant, because a formula needs a constant or it's not a formula. If they are behind the program, have an honest conversation about why and what needs to be done to fix it. How does this feel now? Is it more familiar? This looks a lot like ABA, or positive behavioral supports, and frankly, it looks an awful lot like the general attitude of society towards us in all the little moments of our lives. I might rephrase it one more time to make that last connection even more obvious. We may know that autistics rarely do everything as neurotypicals expect, but you can't let them off the hook for that. You have to keep at them. You have to assume that they will A, keep trying to do things right, and B, be consistent, because you need to be consistent or it won't work. If they mess up, talk to them about why and what needs to be done to fix it. How about now? Have you encountered this attitude? The basic assumption underlying this is that, one, we know that these people are a certain way, but two, we're going to ignore reality, and three, pretend that everyone is the way that our concept says that they should be and deal with them on those terms. And when that predictably gets results that we don't want, four, blame them and push them to become our conceptual people. While most people wouldn't recognize that as an intentional thought behind how they deal with people around them, when you really get down to it, it's essentially how a lot of us go through life. Ugh, he's so rude. I've told him a thousand times that he can't say things like that. If he keeps it up, he's going to lose his job. To be fair, some things are straight up mean and hurtful to say. But is he actually being mean or just autistically direct? Maybe other people could get curious about whether he's telling the truth and consider his point, rather than just taking offense and trying to fix or punish him. I admit to doing this myself. Rather than taking people for who they are, I've been known to overly focus on what should be and get frustrated that it's not that way, rather than dealing with the real person or the situation in front of me. Over the last several years, as I've healed old wounds, unmasked, and learned healthier communication patterns, I've gotten a lot better at recognizing that impulse and not doing it. What surprised me the most was that the more I disconnected from negative self-talk and the less I judged myself, the less I judged others, and the more my compassion for them grew. It happened quite naturally and has been wonderful. I mention this not to say how great I am, but to give hope that it is possible to change that pattern. As someone who thinks and processes information and sensory data, and whose natural communication style lies somewhat out of the expected range, I have been subjected to this pattern more than most. Fortunately, I never got ABA training, but I did get a lot of pressure to stop saying rude things. I got laughed at a lot. People would get offended when I didn't mean it that way, or I would do something that I thought was humorous and it would go badly. And most of the time, the reactions of people around me were predictable and consistent. I was in the wrong. I needed to fix it. They never explained how, though, 
or what was so bad about whatever it is that I said or did. So my brain, that is excellent at problem solving, would go to work on trying to figure out what the hell I did wrong. But what was not consistent was the context and the circumstances and the many-fold variety of factors and exceptions and, and, and... How do some people just pick this stuff up intuitively? Sometimes I could figure out what my social faux pas was, but most of the time I was just left confused. And over time, I learned enough of those rules to more or less kind of fit in. But there were lots of leaks around the edges, and people could tell. I don't think that anyone was truly fooled. And damn, that was exhausting. Now I have a word for that, by the way, it's masking. But all that confusion had its effect. I was never sure what I would do or say that would set people off. I never knew which way to turn, what to say, what not to say, what would make things worse. And the result was anxiety. Fear, without being able to point to a specific thing and say, it's that, that's the scary thing. That thing was people. But that's not really helpful because the same sentence with one person would lead to an eruption, but with another they would laugh and say, I love you so much. They were still laughing at what I said, but appreciated my unorthodox style. After I figured out that I'm autistic, that powerful problem-solving brain of mine went to work at dismantling the results of other people trying to fit me into their shoulds. I started hacking all of those experiences in my past, finding the painful beliefs that I developed about myself and other people in society, figuring out how to be more myself, and how to be okay with the fact that not everyone loves that. It led to more authentic communication and better relationships. A lot of what I had to unlearn were the effects of people trying to fit me into their concept of what should be. How to unlearn these things and how to figure out what to unlearn without gaslighting yourself is precisely what I share in my anti-anxiety course, because we don't have to live in the world of their shoulds or chase their normal. Are you ready to break out of the formula and feel better about yourself? To make your life better? That's scary, I know. Well, this is how to deal with all the fears and anxieties that arise because of the years of informal or formal training in being normal that you've received. You were born on this earth the way that you are, which means that you deserve to be on this earth precisely the way that you are. Making that real isn't easy, and that's okay. And the part of it that is dealing with the fears and anxieties that come up every time you want to disclose something, or say no, or ask for accommodations, or tell someone what you really want, or ask for a change, or spend money on yourself, or try something new. <sighs> if you want to see this in action, by the way, here's a video about a time when I actually told someone no, even though I was super anxious about it, but managed to get through it. And I'll include a link just for those who are interested to my anti-anxiety course, in which I go over how you actually get to that point where you can say no, or ask for accommodations, or all of the other minutiae of life from an autistic perspective for autistics. This is such an important thing for all of us, and I wish you well in your own journey, and that you make today a neuro-wonderful day.